Well guys, here's a schematic. Actually, it's an owner's manual for a TRC 458. And I've had this book forever. <laughs> forever. Hey, anyways, the main reason I want to keep the manual is because the schematic is printed onto it. So, uh, I guess, uh, following the road map, it's uh, quite the maze of a road map. But, if you know where to be looking, it's not so bad. So, let's go over a couple of areas here on this particular radio that could be causing problems. Um, so first, I will draw your attention to right here. This being D28. D28, and you got C104. As for voltage regulating, voltage regulation, uh, you have another one here, D25, which is C101. You also have another one here for voltage regulation, D24. Um, there's a there's a few different areas in this circuit that uses zener diodes for voltage regulating in this radio. Uh, so the first thing we're going to look at is obviously the radio is not working 100% in receive. Um, the display is pretty much dimmed out to pretty much nothing. So even though this is the 458, the main circuit is identical. If you add, you know, a couple add additions to 457, the 458 didn't have, but other than that, it's the same board. Um, so we got the channel selector, we got the display, which is a little bit different, but that's no big deal. Which comes back here, which dumps into the UPD858. And the UPD858 obviously has a 5 volt a voltage regulator right here. You got your input here, you got your ground, and you got your output. The output of this is supposed to be about 5, uh, five volts, which feeds the UPD858 directly. Um, now the voltage input on the regulator um, is somewhere in the vicinity of 12 volts or so, maybe a bit less, um, which feeds. If you come all the way down, it goes directly, see? To the voltage regulation. Uh-huh, yep, mm -hmm. you see it. So basically, here's your power supply right here. That's your power supply, that's your transfer, that's your transformer, that's your bridge rectifier, that's your DC output, that's your AC input. So that's your DC out to your main board. And of course, right off the bat, as you can see, output. What am I looking at here? Okay, that's your ground. So you got your AC in, okay, alright, so there's your DC, gotcha. Bit confusing there at first, alright. So, alright, I just had to compose myself here for a minute, <laughs> I got a bit confused. So that's your DC, AC, that's your main power out of your power supply. So you run, uh, run around DC, you flick your switch, power dumps right into this, uh, in this filter circuit, goes your power switch, goes back out, goes through two contacts on your uh, on your relay. In this case, it's on receive, which would dump into these into this regulator circuit here. You have a protection diode. Here's your relay. So yeah, when you go and transmit, which also no power. You can notice this is receive. Then you switch into transmit. Then you go to transmit. Controlled by SD three two five. Which runs down, right across, goes to your mode switch, and your mode switch supplies your 12 volt to the uh, collector of each of each your output and final. Right now, there's no there's no 12 volt here at all, going through your mode switch, and you notice it's there should be there on AM upper or lower sideband, regardless. Um, so yeah, and it gets its voltage depending on your mode. Let's see, so you got your AM. Guess there's a set of contacts, see, eh? on your relay. So right now she's in receive, so she's not transmitted. So in receive, this relay you should click here. And it will get its voltage. So 
through your CB PA switch, through your in, uh, inductor, coupling inductor, that's your audio amp. Uh, it gives us a voltage SD325. That's your main switching right here. Transmit audio and everything else. So, we've lost power on upper and lower side band. So if we flick, we follow this bottom one, you will see it's controlled on transmit. It gets this voltage across, controlled by 325 again as usual. Yeah, see, it gets on, on transmit, it gets this voltage from a lot of different sources, including the audio amp. So, yeah. There's a lot of places the voltage can drop, can disappear. And any one of these areas over here could cause that to happen. So, what we're going to have to do here, uh, right off the bat, we're going to um, just take her out of AC altogether, disconnect the AC power. We're going to hook her into DC, and we're going to see where the power is disappearing. And uh, basically how we're going to do that is we're going to follow each one of these. We're going to follow this line, supply line, through the radio, and all these individual uh, points. On the audio amp, look on the audio amp, on the relay, 325. So we're going to check a bunch of different parts here different points and see if we can track down where the radio is losing her power and I would be willing to bet dollars to donuts that the problem the radio is having is due to this area right here right there that's the main voltage regulating switching circuit it's right here so if there's a fault in the radio, when it's losing voltage, it would be, chances are, it would be here with the, volt, with the uh, Zener diodes and capacitors. So, let's see, just, uh, you know, if my theory holds up to anything or my theory is complete garbage, we shall find out. So anyways, I know this is a little bit long-winded, but uh, just wanted you to see my, uh, you know, what I'm thinking could be a problem with this 457. Again, so what we'll do first, just to get everybody up to date, we'll show you what's going on. I'll put the radio on AC. You'll see what's, what's coming up and what's not coming up. And then we'll put the radio on DC. And you'll also show what works and what don't work. And then uh, you'll be up to speed as to how the radio is performing. Anyways, stand by and I should get some power right, going. So I uh, have the radio uh, she on. She's on AM. RF gains all the way up. Squil or clarifier is set uh, 12 o'clock. Squelch is off. Clock as you can see is doing its thing. And radio is turned off. So right now we'll turn the radio on. You can see the two lights are lit up, or two meters lit up rather. You see that the mode indicator is lit up, but you'll also notice the channel selector is very faintly lit up. I don't know if you can even see that. Don't even look like it's even moving. Yeah, it's moving very, very dimly. Yeah, let me turn off the light. See if that help you see that a little bit better. It might, it might not. Don't know. You can see it. See it changing. Channel 40, channel 1. So, yeah, you see how dim that is? That's not normal for a start for this uh, radio. That should be nice and bright. And as you can see, there is no dimmer on this radio to even dim out that display. So, we'll put her on transmit. This should transmit. This is your SD wire, but we'll put her on transmit. I'm just known as the meter. As you can see, 
nothing. And just to verify that, she's on dummy load. Nothing. Nobody at all. So, turn the volume up. And there's a little bit of noise here. Nobody home. So now we'll put the radio on uh, on DC power and see the difference. Right. So right now the radio is on DC, external power supply up here. So now you'll see when I turn around the display will light up. You can actually see the display now. It's on DC power. So right off the bat we know we have a problem on the uh, between the power supply and the input. Right now, so far, the power supply is not delivering enough voltage for a start to power the radio. So we know we got a problem with the power supply or related circuit. So now we'll put her on transmit. Still nothing. We'll put her on sideband. Steve, the sound is still the same. Nothing. We'll put her on calibrate. Bring the calibrate all the way over. If there's any RF power at all, the SWR meter will move. So she is here. As you can see, she is completely dead in the water and receiving transmit. So, this is part two. So, what we'll do now with part three. We're actually going to start playing with some voltages. We're going to start with the power supply and see if the power supply is, is even providing 13 volts on that switch, ECDC switch. That's, uh, that's going to be test number one. See if proper voltage is coming off of this power supply board. Anyways, stand by. We shall see what's going on in part three. Hey guys, hope you enjoy the videos. All the best.